All right, number five. The first thing we need is a common denominator because we're adding. And so, in this case, the easiest denominator I can get would be 8. So I'm going to make both of them over 8, which means multiplying the top and bottom of the second by 2. So it becomes 5 eighths plus 2 eighths. Now we can go ahead and do the addition because we have that common denominator. So 5 plus 2 gives us a 7. And then remember, if it's going to be a common denominator, it has to stay the same. So it stays as 7 over 8. All right, for the second one, in order to get a common denominator there, there's not a nice pretty number that's lower than just 3 times 4. So our common denominator here is going to be 12. That means I'm going to have to multiply the first fraction, top and bottom, by 4, and the second fraction, top and bottom, by 3. So if I do that, that gives me 4 twelfths plus 3 twelfths. Then we can go ahead and add. We get 7 over 12. Can that be reduced at all? No. Because no. there's nothing I can divide both 7 and 12 by other than 1. And we don't want to spend the next 10 years dividing by 1 because we'll still come out with the same thing. Okay, number 7, we're subtracting. What do you always need when subtracting fractions? Common denominator, yeah. Hopefully you're noticing a theme here. And so in this case, I think the easiest common denominator to get is 6. So I'm going to make both of these into denominators of 6. So that starts me with 5, 6 minus 2, 6. 5 minus 2 gives me 3, and again, that's over the same thing. So I get 3 over 6. Can this one be reduced? Yeah. Yes. I can divide top and bottom of this one both by 3. And so that's what I'm doing, is I'm dividing top and bottom by 3 to reduce it, which gives me 1 over 2, or just 1 half. And then for number 8, um, for number 8, again, this was kind of like number 6 in terms of getting that common denominator. There's nothing other than just multiplying them together to get our denominator. So I'm going to make both of these over 15. So it's going to be something over 15 minus something over 15. Notice for that first fraction, I'm multiplying top and bottom then by 3. Which gives me 3 fifteenths. The second one, I'm multiplying top and bottom by 5. And so I got 3 minus 5 on the top, which gives me negative 2. So I've got negative 2 fifteenths here. That is basically as reduced as it can get, but I don't really like leaving the negative in the top there. We don't want to leave a negative inside of the fraction like that. So it's not that that's wrong as much as we would like to clean it up a little. So I'm actually going to write my answer as a negative 2 fifteenths. Basically, I'm saying the fraction is negative as opposed to just part of the fraction being negative in order to be able to get that. 